We're at an Edmonton police facility. This is where we're going to be doing the shooting. We test all our firearms in here. Testing out an untraceable firearm, a ghost gun. Now we'll load a full magazine. Firearms expert Larry Snydel just finished making this gun using a 3D printer. A do-it-yourself deadly weapon created in just a few hours. And are we all good? We're good. What's worrying police? A growing number of criminals across Canada are doing the exact same thing. We first told you about 3D printed ghost guns more than a year ago. It's crazy that this becomes a full out gun. The Glock 26X, the AR pistol. The guns are homemade with no serial numbers for tracking anywhere on them. We know that they're crime guns. We know that they're created for a specific purpose. These guns present unique challenges for police agencies working to maintain public safety. Since our story aired, police across Canada carried out a first-of-its-kind nationwide bust targeting the firearms. 45 people were arrested on Tuesday. Nationwide crackdown on ghost guns. Seizing 71 completed 3D printed guns and 176 3D printed gun frames across eight provinces. What is your worst case scenario with 3D printed guns? Yeah, honestly, it's the sheer, sheer numbers of them. They are a massive, massive concern. So here we are in the middle of a police station and you are here making guns. When the guns came up, it was bring the printer in and could give it a try here. This is the firearms examination unit of the Alberta law enforcement response teams. We printed this to demonstrate how the supports work to help the investigators. Here, Larry tries to recreate 3D printed guns found at crime scenes, helping to build court cases and educate officers. What can you learn from printing these off when it comes to investigations? Somebody had attempted to print a whole bunch of guns, had a whole bunch of parts, and nothing was ever completed. So we are able to recreate what he did and uh, end up to get a functional firearm. So we were able to get a conviction on that. Edmonton police seized 32 3D printed guns last year, compared to just four the year before. The force recently carried out one of Western Canada's largest ever busts, seizing guns and gun silencers that were 3D printed. I'm looking at what was, was happening a couple years ago, what's happening now, people are experimenting on different things. That makes this trend even more ominous. It allows them to... With some criminals, Larry says, finding ways to 3D print metal parts that would normally need to be purchased. As I look at all these things, these improvised ways, it's pretty overwhelming when you think about the technology and being able to police it. Yeah. The technology keeps advancing, right? The printers are getting better, the materials are getting better. We're going to see more and more of that. Just hit the slice plate and it'll go through and calculate all the tool moves. Larry shows us just how easy these guns are to make. And this gives us what we're going to print. Instruction data files are downloaded from the internet and loaded into the 3D printer. And when I'm ready, I just hit print plate and that goes off to uh, the printer. Depending on the printer, the receiver, or the frame of the gun, the part where the serial number would normally be, can be made in under 10 hours. The metal parts are then added. What do you think people should know about these guns and the challenge that they pose for police? They're dangerous. Just stay away from them. If you are the person printing, that's a problem. And if you're not, then you don't know what you're actually getting. As numbers started to spike last year, we sat down with then Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino, who told us Ottawa had a plan to get 3D printed guns under control. This is technology that is new, but it has been around for a few years. Why haven't you done more sooner to stop this? Well, we've been active. Um, we put in place a national ban on assault-style rifles. We put in place the a national 3D, handgun 3D freeze. 3D printed guns specifically. And we have a plan in place to deal specifically with ghost guns, which does involve expanding our legislative toolkit and sending a strong message to criminals that if you think you're going to use ghost guns to get away with it, you're wrong. Nearly a year later, the Liberal gun control law C-21 was finally passed. 
It was already illegal in Canada to make a gun, but the new law further targets 3D printed weapons in two ways. Making it a crime to have computer data that pertain to a firearm capable of being used with a 3D printer for the purpose of manufacturing or trafficking a gun and requiring a gun license to buy some of the metal parts, including the barrel and slide, a change police forces had been demanding. A gun barrels, they're fully legal, they can be moved around as parts. So I was saying before, actually last summer, that I'd like to see some controls on those. Most of C21, like the part about the computer data, is already in effect. But that section of the law dealing with those metal parts has not come into force yet. We confirmed that with Public Safety Canada. And the agency did not give us any clear timeline for when that part of the law will actually be enforced. And those computer data files for printing guns, despite the law, they're still easy to find online. I printed this beautiful blue With a frame. large 3D printed gun community based in the U.S. Back in Edmonton, we sit down with Deputy Chief Devin LaForce. What do you see in terms of, of who's making them, what they're doing with them? where the guns are going. So it's uh, usually like uh, an organized crime group or, or network or criminal. That person could have limited criminal history and they have a technical savvy for 3D printing and are able to manufacture these guns and subsequently sell them. It's definitely uh, valuable for them to sell it to criminals. Is there anything more that can be done to help get ahead of this problem? I think now it's just a little bit of catch up because uh, certainly when uh, instructions and directions on how to make a gun are put onto the internet or the dark web, as much as we can try and make it illegal or try to pull back from the availability of those instructions or directions, it exists. And so all of these things, you know, there's a little bit of a lag, a little bit of a catch up for the court system. It sounds like there's a lot of catch up. You've used that expression a lot of times. That is an unfortunate reality. You know, we're very, you know, policing is very reactive. An even stolen firearm, you can trace the origin of that firearm. Whereas with a 3D printed gun, you can't, you can't, you don't have that tracing history. So without other evidence, police can't know where the guns came from or who made them. And they make traditional investigative techniques less effective. The next day, this forensic firearms investigator shows us why. You look at them both at the same time, and then you try to see if there are similarities. Ebony Lyle Nicholas analyzes bullet casings from crime scenes, trying to link them to the same gun. That's not impossible for 3D printed guns, but they make it a lot harder. In a normal factory manufactured firearm, there are markings that are left during the manufacturing process that during the firing process get transferred onto a cartridge case. There are databases that exist out there that have certain markings that are particular to, um, to certain makes. So the difference is like, with a factory made gun, if you have the cartridge casings, you can get information about the gun from the casings. But with a 3D print, you can't Yeah, no, really. because there's so many versions of them out there, like you can't unless you have source material, really. That makes Larry's work even more important. This is what a receiver looks like as it's being printed. At the end, metal parts need to be added. We're going to take the supports off to give us access to all the parts here. Just make sure it takes Larry time. about half an hour to complete. I know all the plans are there, but what's the learning curve to actually building a gun? Because I'm watching you and I'm like, there are some intricate little steps here. If you have somebody who knows what he's doing, he's got some mechanical background, yeah. I don't see it being difficult. No. The trigger mechanism pops into this rail here. It's not 100%, but I think we should go give it a try. Okay. Larry hopes to retire soon. But for now, his work on 3D printed guns is keeping him busy. He's got eyes and ears protection on. Okay, and we got a crack in the receiver after 10. 10 rounds and then the plastic there cracked. Yeah. A 3D printed gun is not always reliable, but experts say that's not what matters. It's still functional. One round is bad enough and we got 10 out of there. 